Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. We have been talking about proxy variable and its usefulness. So we mentioned that the proxy variables will, there is a risk of having some measurement error, but even then we use a proxy variable because we cannot measure the exact variable of interest. So if we completely omit the exact variable of interest, the problem that we may face is that we might have to have this omitted variable bias problem in our model which will lead to invalid statistical tests which we actually want to avoid. Secondly, by including a proxy, we can actually get some idea about the importance of the variable of interest. It can shed some light on the variable of interest. So that is why we actually know, we can actually know that, all right, so I do not have any uh, measurement of IQ, but I can at least use education as a proxy for IQ. And I can see if the education is actually important to uh, important variable in explaining wage so then IQ is perhaps a really important variable when I try to measure wage okay so let's talk about uh, the proxy variable in detail so let's talk about a particular type of proxy variable which is most sort of we can call it an ideal proxy which is actually very difficult to find but let's start with the simple one so the ideal proxy is something where I can Let's say I have a, a explanatory variable x2 and I want to represent x2 with some ideal proxy and in this case the ideal proxy will be uh, related to x2 in some linear fashion. All right. So let's say the z is the proxy variable. Let's say the x2 is the iq and the z is the education and let's say the iq and education are related linearly which may not be the case in reality but let's say uh, this is the case where I can establish a linear relationship. Of course, I do not know lambda or mu because I do not have data on on data about x2 iq. So I only have data on z. So based on that, I cannot estimate really lambda or mu2. But what we can do is we can actually incorporate the whole equation. Sort of we can substitute the whole right hand side into the actual regression equation. So let's say my regression equation here is y is equal to standard regression equation beta 1 plus beta 2 x2 where I cannot measure x2 here and then I have a beta 3 x3 and then I have up to let's say beta n xn and there is some error term mu uh, u. Now I do not have this so what I do I can substitute the this x2 with my proxy so I'll how I'll do that so beta 1 plus beta 2 into lambda plus mu z and then I have beta 3 x3 and other terms beta in xn and u beta in xn and I'll have my u error term. Now with ideal proxy we can say the model is correctly specified if the following we, we can if we if, if we have this ideal proxy so what you can have is the following one is that we can have the same r squared value same r squared value squared value for this regression so let's say I name this regression equation this is equation 1 and equation 2 so it doesn't matter if I run equation 1 or equation 2 I'll have the same r squared value second is that the coefficients and the standard error so let's say beta 3 beta 4 and other coefficients that you're measuring beta n they will be same same and same standard error standard error we cannot have we cannot have the intercept term we cannot measure the intercept term because here the intercept term is going to be beta 1 plus beta 2 lambda now since I do not know lambda so I do not I can't measure this uh, intercept term and that is fine intercept term Point number four is that 
it will not be possible to estimate the value of beta 2 because here what I am going to get is beta 2 into mu. It will not be possible to estimate beta 2 because it is associated with mu which is unknown. Not be possible, possible to estimate, estimate beta 2. It is going to be same as the t-stat for x2 because Essentially, we do not want the significance test for Z2 and X2 to be different. So basically, T stat for Z is same as that for X2. That for X2. That for X2. So essentially, uh, if I have an ideal proxy, all these conditions will be satisfied and we do not have any problem with bias or a standard error which 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 could be a problem in case of measurement error. So if we have the mode point is if we have an ideal proxy, so we do not have to worry about the problem of bias or standard error. But oftentimes we really do not have the ideal proxy and that is basically the case in, in, in reality. And in those cases what we have is called imperfect proxy. And what is imperfect proxy? An imperfect proxy is something wh where the proxy is related to the variable of interest in non-linear fashion. It could be logarithmic way or quadratic way or any other fashion. Now, most of the cases we have imperfect proxy and we need to find out a way to actually, you know, uh, address the problem. And in these cases of imperfect proxy, we can have the problem with bias or standard error. So we use something called instrumental variable that has really great significance in, in economics and econometric research. So we'll talk about uh, instrumental variable in the next lectures. So with this, we'll end this lecture on proxy. And thank you.